In early 1914, the First World War was raging across Europe, with the Schlieffen Plan in full effect and the German army careening across France. The Triple Entente forces see little hope. Then in a surprise move, von Kluck's first army turned southwest away from Paris and widening the gap between the German second army. This change in direction, still mind-boggling to historians to this day, allows an opening to the quickly retiring BEF, or British Extraditionary Forces, the French 5th and 9th Army. As the Schlieffen Plan opens like a door across France towards Paris, the BEF, led by Sir John French, slams von Kluck through the gap opened at his flank, like breaking the hinges off a door. While the French 5th and 9th led by Falk hold von Kluck in place. Thus ends the German advance, forcing them to fall back and solidify their flanks. With the failing of the Schlieffen plan and the stalemate of the troops in the center, both sides return to a strategy known as Napoleonic warfare. Both the Central and the Triple Entente powers desperately try to find a flank to turn and roll their enemy up. This type of strategy starts something known as the race to the sea. With both the Triple Entente and Central Powers moving as fast as they can towards the English Channel, the Belgian government makes a hard decision to flood their farmland with seawater by opening the sluices that pump it out. With this plan in place, it will make it near impossible for the Germans to take and hold the rest of Belgium. There is just one problem. They need more time. In a last-ditch effort, the BEF, French, and German forces try to hold near the city of Ypres in Belgium. With battles raging from the 9th of October to the 22nd of November 1914, the Germans made little advances, with the most famous of these known as the Massacre of the Innocents. Nearly 5,400,000 German troops bear down on the outnumbered 4,400,000 Triple Entente forces. The BEF take the brunt of the attack, with their small army of six corps, or 163,897 men, they inflict almost 130,000 German casualties, while only suffering 58,155. This disproportionate ratio was due to the fact that many of these German soldiers were green 17 and 18 year old men who hadn't even finished training while the men of the BEF were arguably the most veteran army in the world. Although the British eventually had to fall back, the damage was done and the fields were flooded. This battle will go down much like the Battle of Dunkirk in the Second World War, technically a defeat for the Allies, but was seen as a victory and a huge boost to morale, thus ending the race to the sea and leaving no other options but trench warfare on the Western Front. This next part of the documentary is a recount of true events that happened on the 29th of October, 1914, through the eyes of a sergeant. October 29th, 1920, and I'm here with a survivor of the First Battle of Ypres, whose name he wishes to not be disclosed. Could you please tell us what that battle was like? It was very rough. I paid for well to my right leg and to my career as a soldier. I was at a trench in Gouval, near Ypres, on October 29, 1914. In the first battle of Ypres, the British were outnumbered by 7 to 1. On the previous evening, we took over trenches, not deep or elaborate ones, from an English regiment. I cannot say which regiment we relieved. Our sergeant, on entering the trench, heard the last man as he was doing hurried exit say, So long, Jack. Not our for a nice place, Jack Johnson, all bleeding day. On that night, there was no sleep, as we had to dig and dig to improve the trench, and were being fired at all night. At 5, 5 a.m., a group of us were standing in the open. Everything had turned peaceful, admiring our now almost perfect trench when hell seemed to let loose. All the guns in Flanders seemed to have suddenly concentrated on our particular sector of the British front. When the artillery finally subsided, Germans sprang everywhere and attacked us. My platoon held fast. We lost some good comrades. Then we were ordered to evacuate the trench and assist to hold the trench on the flank where the fighting was fiercest. I was a sergeant and was told to take 
and hold a certain part of the trench where the occupants had just been driven out.